textbook, ladies and gentlemen. Please take it out and turn to page one of chapter one. Page one of chapter one. Again, I want to welcome all of you to this class. I pray that it will be not only personally enriching, but also enriching in your ministries, in your personal devotion, and also in your whole academic life. <coughs> We're here at the Evangelical Theological College in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. But I'm hoping that as a result of videotaping this class, that many people all around the world will be learning the exact same things you will be learning here for six weeks. All right? So we need to begin at the beginning, which is chapter one, and it is entitled The Letters and Sounds of Greek. Now, one of the things we don't do is we don't read through everything in the book, okay? You can read everything later. This afternoon, come back and read the whole first chapter. But on page one, you'll notice that I have a discussion of the language of the New Testament, okay? Now, you may have heard this before, but what kind of Greek is the language of the New Testament called? Help me out here. It's called Koine Greek. We are studying what is called Koine Greek. And that word in Greek simply means common, common Greek. We are learning not classical Greek or Homeric Greek. And by the way, by the way, you're not learning modern Greek. You're not learning modern Greek. There's modern Greek, right? In other words, the language that you are learning, and you think, well, I can go to Athens now and speak. <laughs> sorry, sorry, you won't be able to do that. Someone says, well, I can go to Athens now, and I can order a burrito in the restaurant. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't do that, and I'll tell you why. Because the language you are learning is completely different. Completely different from modern Greek. Now, I can, and I have been to Athens, and I have ordered a burrito in Athens. But the only reason I can do that is I've studied modern Greek, okay? I, I've studied modern Greek, so I can speak the language. What you are learning has nothing to do with modern Greek. So the, the, the pronunciation is different, the vocabulary is different, the syntax is different, the grammar is different, okay? You are learning a language that was spoken 2,000 years ago. Now, Greek has five periods. You don't need to write this down. This is not something that you should remember. You have Homeric Greek spoken by Homer. You have Classical Greek. You have Koine Greek, also called Hellenistic Greek also called Hellenistic Greek. Then you have Byzantine Greek, and then you have Modern Greek. Those are the five periods of the Greek language. And listen, the language we are learning is right in the middle, right? Right in the middle. From about 250 before Christ to about 250 after Christ. So in about this 500 year period, in the middle of which the New Testament was written, that's called, what kind of Greek? It's called Koine. Say that word. Koine. What does it mean? Common. Common Greek. Now, why did God choose Greek to record the New Testament in? Well, if you ask the typical Greek professor, he'll say something like this. The reason why Greek was chosen is because Greek is the most sublime expression of human communication the world's ever known. <laughs> Greek has the most complex form of semotaxis and orthography and morphology. And God therefore had to use a complex language like Greek in order to inscripturate the truths of the New Testament. So Greek is the most important language the world has ever known. Have you ever heard anything like that? You know, there's only one problem with that. It's not true. <laughs> it's not true. Greek is not superior to any other language. It's not superior. If you, if, let's say, if you want to talk about a very complex language, Go to upstate New York in America. The Algonquin Indians have a more complicated language than Greek. So listen, because there's only one reason why the New Testament was written in Greek. And his name was Alexander the... Got it? That's it. That's not the only reason. Alexander was the son of Philip of Macedon. And Philip had conquered all of Macedon. And Alexander had a divine vision. And in this vision, God said to him, not Xavier God, the other guy, not the true God, but his small g God. God said to him, you are my son. Really, that's what it said. You are my son, and I want you to conquer the entire civilized world. And that's what he did, right? I mean, he was such a good army, such a good fighter, such a good general. He was wounded five times in battle. He always rode his horse in front of all the other troops. Brave! 
And he went and conquered everywhere he went, he conquered. He got as far as the Indus River in India before turning around, coming back, conquering all of Palestine, conquering all of Egypt. And wherever he went, he founded cities. Like in Egypt, there's a city called Alexandria, named after who? Alexander. And so the only reason the New Testament was written in Greek is because by this time, Alexander had conquered the entire Mediterranean world. And watch this. Not only, not only was he going to conquer militarily, he was going to conquer culturally. And in order to do that, he had to impose Greek language everywhere he went. He, he made everybody speak what language? Greek. They weren't Greeks. They were Persians. They were Palestinians. They were Egyptians. But they had to speak Greek. Greek, because he spoke Greek. Greek, because it was his divine language. He thought it was the best language. But it's not superior to any other language. It's not superior to Ampere. It's not superior to English. It's just that was the language that was spoken by everybody who lived in the first century, whether they were cultured or common, whether they were educated or uneducated, whether they lived in Athens or in Alexandria. They spoke what language? Greek. I remember I was flying into um, Rome one day. I was flying the Italian Airlines. The Italian Airlines is called El Italia. I was flying into Da Vinci Airport. I was flying into Da Vinci Airport in Rome, Italy on El Italian Airlines. And as we were landing at the airport, it occurred to me that my Italian pilot was required by international law to speak what language with the tower? What language did he have to speak with the tower? English. English. Right? Why? Well, because English is vastly superior to Italian. <laughs> no. No. It's a fluke of history. 2,000 years ago, everyone spoke what language? Today, everybody who's educated speaks what language? It's just a matter of history. It's not that, e that English is superior to Italian, you see? And a few hundred years ago, everybody who was educated spoke Latin, you know? John Calvin, remember him? He wrote his institutes in what language? He was a Frenchman, so he wrote it in Latin. <laughs> Latin. Everybody spoke Latin. Everybody taught Latin. And back 150 years ago in America, when you graduated, the whole graduation service was in Latin. <laughs> Even 100 years, 150 years ago. I studied at the University of Basel in Switzerland. When I graduated with my doctorate, guess what? The entire graduation service was in Latin. Even to this day. Everything was in Latin. And I had to swear my doctoral oath in Latin. And I had to put my hand on a 13th century sword. And in Latin, I had to swear to defend Basel against all her enemies should she ever be attacked. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> Tradition. You see? So we're studying Greek. We're studying Greek not because it's better than Hebrew, okay? Not because it's better than Amharic, not because it's better than English, it's because God designed that the whole world should speak one language. And therefore it became the most effective means of communicating the word of God. So, that's page one. Page two. Our assignment for today is to learn the what? the Greek alphabet. I'm sorry, any questions to this point? I don't want to go too fast. Anything at all? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, during the first century, <coughs> Rome was a political power of the world. Yes, sir. Uh, but Latin was not uh, widely spoken. No, it yeah. wasn't. What was the reason for that? The question is, in the first century, Rome was the political power, right? Then why wasn't Latin spoken everywhere? And here's the reason. The Romans did not try to impose what? Their culture where they went. They allowed a great degree of autonomy as long as these people remained what? Peaceful. As long as you remain peaceful, you can speak your own language, you can have your own customs. The Jews could continue worshiping in the temple and in the synagogue, right? They did not have the same vision that Alexander had of imposing his culture. They didn't care about culture. They just, they just were concerned about political power. 
Right? Right? So that's why, listen to me, that's why when Paul wrote his letter to the Romans, remember Paul wrote a letter to the Romans called Romans? What language did he write it in? You tell me. Greek. Greek. Not Latin. They weren't interested in cultural conquering. They were interested in political power. Political power. And by the way, you know, even Nero, Nero preferred to speak Greek. And you know what? Nero's favorite city was Athens. And if you've ever been to Athens, you know there's a whole theater that he built right next to the uh, uh, Parthenon. <laughs> that was his favorite place to go. And everybody who was educated in, 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 in Italy spoke Greek because they had Greek, they captured Greeks in battle, they brought them over as slaves, and some of them were very highly educated people. They were like university professors. And now they come to Rome and they're teaching Greek. Everybody wants to learn Greek. Very good question. Thank you for asking. Are there any others before we move on? Okay, on page two, please look at the alphabet. Please notice there are five columns. There are five columns. The reason I mention that is there's only one column you will need to learn. And that is the middle column. Do you see that there? It's called the lower case letters. All right? The lower case letters. Now, maybe some of you have never seen the Greek alphabet before. OK, that's fine. Because remember, we're going to start at the beginning every time we start something. We don't assume you know anything. Is that OK? Can I treat you all like dumb, stupid idiots? Oops. <laughs> Did I say that? I'm going to treat you as if you know nothing. Is that OK? I know some of you have had four, four semesters of Greek. But I'm still going to treat you as if you don't know anything. OK, so it'd make a good review for you, wouldn't it? Make a good review. Now, you notice on the left-hand side, I have the name of the letter. And then I have the uppercase letter. And then I have the lowercase. The only one you are responsible for in this class are the lowercase letters. Why? Because in Greek, the uppercase letters are not used very frequently. They're used much less frequently than, let's say, in English. So the only one you really need to master is are the lowercase letters. Then notice, I've given you the English equivalent, right? And then I've given you a guide to pronunciation. All right, are we all there on this chart? Now just listen, don't say anything, but just listen. I am going to go through the alphabet, and I'm going to go through the left-hand column with the names, OK? This may be brand new to you. But if it is, just listen carefully. It's not hard to learn the alphabet. And here are the names. Just listen now. Alpha, beta. Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta. Now, in, in America, we often call this next letter Iota, right? You will never say Iota. The letter is Iota, OK? Iota, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Xi, Omicron, Pi, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, Ki, Psi, Omega. Let me go through it again, okay? Listen up, and then we'll have you re repeat, okay? But just listen this time. Here we go. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon. Right? Zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda. Mu, nu, xi, omicron, pi, rho, sigma. Tau, upsilon, phi, ki, psi, omega. Please repeat after me. Are you ready? Alpha, Alpha. Beta. Beta. Beta, Gamma, Gamma. Delta, Delta. Epsilon. Epsilon, Zeta, Zeta. Eta. Eta. Theta. Theta. Theta, Theta, Iota, Iota. Kappa. Kappa, Lambda, Lambda. Mu. Mu, Nu, Nu. Xi, Xi. Omicron. Omicron. Pi. Pi. Rho. Rho. Sigma. Sigma. Tau. Tau. 
upsilon. Upsilon. Phi. Phi. Ki. Ki. Psi. Psi. Omega. Omega. Let me make some remarks about these letters. Alpha is no problem. Beta is our English B, right? Gamma is our English G. Delta is our English D. Now watch this. Greek has two E's. One of them is called Epsilon, and the other is called Eta. Okay? Epsilon and Eta. In other words, whenever you see this letter, you will always pronounce it how? Well, what's the name of this letter? Epsilon. Therefore, you always pronounce it E. Right? E. E. How will you remember how to pronounce a Greek letter? You will remember the name of the letter, and if you can remember the name of the letter, then you can remember how to pronounce it. So this is an epsilon, whereas this letter is called eta. Therefore, you will always pronounce eta as a. Got it? This is e as in epsilon. This is a as in eta. Watch this. Greek distinguishes between a short o and a long o. This letter is called what? Omicron. And this letter is called omega. This is a little o, see? Little o, omicron. And then you have omega, mega, big o. See that? That's how that works. So look at the board here. This letter is called omicron. How will you always pronounce it? Ah. Say ah. Ah. This is an omicron. We will always pronounce it as ah. Now what's the name of this letter? Omega. How will you always pronounce this? O. So, can you hear the difference? This is all, this is O, this is E, and this is A. Good. Theta. Oh, that's a tough one, huh? The TH sound. There's not many languages that can do the TH sound, right? And the Germans have a hard time doing it, and French and Spanish, and most people cannot do the TH. All right? So, if yours comes out a little bit more like Theta, that's okay. I understand. It all has to do with the tongue and the mouth, okay? Now, notice this next letter, folks, is never iota. Never, never, never I. If you see an iota, it's always E, okay? As in iota. Kappa is our K. Lambda is our L. Mu is our M. Nu is our N. C is our X. Omicron is our short O. Pi, or you can say P, it doesn't matter, it's the first sound that matters. Pi or P is our P. Rho is our R. Sigma is our S. Now stop right there. Look in the lowercase. You'll see there's two ways of forming a sigma. Do you see that there? There are two ways of forming a sigma. This sigma is the one that is used at the end of a word, and only at the end. All other times, the sigma is written this way. Because this sigma is found only at the end of the word, guess what we call it? We call it the final sigma. The final sigma, okay? Now, let me just say one more thing about the sigma. If you were taking textual criticism with me, if you were learning how to read the early manuscripts of the New Testament, the sigma was written neither of these ways. The sigma was written like this. It looks like one letter in English, C. But it's an S. That's an S. It's called the Cyrillic. Sigma. Cyrillic, like in what language? Anybody here know Russian? <coughs> the Cyrillic Sigma. This is, this is how you do an S in, in Russian. And, and likewise, in ancient Greek, in the earliest manuscripts of the New Testament, you didn't see this. You didn't see this. You saw this. Okay? It comes, it's, it's the same as in the Russian language. I remember. Do you remember a few years ago when there was a country called the Soviet Union? Do you remember that country called the Soviet Union? Remember that? Yeah, that's a long time ago. There was a country called the Soviet Union. And I remember watching the Olympics. And you remember the athletes? The athletes on their, on their uniforms. Remember the athletes used to have these letters? And I, I always thought, what in the world does CCCP mean? I always was confused. What in the world does CCC? Why did they have CCCP on their uniforms? Well, it wasn't CCCP. This is an S. This is an S. This is an S, and in Greek, this is not a P, this is a what? That's an R. Huh? S, 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 
Soyuz of the Soviet Socialist Republic. Got it? I never knew that. I was a CCCP. <laughs> what in the world is that? All right, that's the sigma. Notice there are two ways of forming the sigma. Then you have the tau, which is our T, the upsilon, which is our U, the phi, which is our pH, the key, which is our CH, and I'm going to stop right there for a minute, the letter T. See? The letter T looks like this. It looks like an X, doesn't it? But don't say X. Say key. Now normally, you see this CH? In ancient Greek, it was probably a guttural sound. Okay? Like, like in Hebrew, you have this sound. Okay? And oftentimes, you will be told, when someone teaches you Greek, they'll say, pronounce it like the CH in this German word. Or the CH in this Scottish word. Right? They'll say, this, this CH is like the CH in this German word, or the CH in this Scottish word. There's only one problem with telling students that. That assumes they know how to correctly pronounce these words. Right? I look at those words and say, that's batch. That's loach. But that's not, that's not true. In German, you would say what? This was the great composer. His name was Bach. Bach. And the, the word for lake in Scottish is loch. Loch, right? Bach. Loch. Chi. But, however, here's what I tell my students. Because that is not a natural sound in English, I prefer that they learn the CH in, as in this English word. Can you pronounce this word for me? Chemist. chemist right? Not chemist. Just chemist. You see the CH there? Chemist. Now, if, if this is a natural sound for you, I don't know, in America, is this a natural sound? Then you could do it. <laughs> and if you have a bad cold, it really helps. <laughs> but, but for our purposes, if you just want to go like the CH in chemist, that's okay, okay? That's fine. Then you have the C, and then you have the omega. All right? Okay. Now, here's what we need to do. We have about four minutes before break. Um, turn the page, and I want to talk about these vowels called diphthongs. We have a few minutes before the break. These are called diphthongs. And a diphthong, listen, a diphthong is very simple. It's just a combination of vowel sounds. A combination of vowel sounds. And you notice I've listed them for you on the bottom of page four. Okay? Now I'm going to read these, these diphthongs with the pronunciation. Just listen, will you? Just listen, and then we'll go over it again. And then you'll listen again, and then we'll go over it again, and then you'll say them. All right? Please look at the left-hand column, the diphthong. Here we go. I, as in the English word aisle. Do you see that sample there? Aisle. A, as in the English word eight. Oi, as in oil. We, as in sweet. Ow, as in faust. You as in feud, and oo as in what English word? Sue. Okay? Now here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go I as in, and then you're going to say aisle, okay? And that's how we're going to go through it. Are you ready? Here we go. I as in? I. I, I as in aisle. A as in? A. Oi as in? Oi. We as in? Sue. Faust, excuse me. <laughs> Faust as in ow. <laughs> ow as in? Faust. You as in? You. Oo as in? Su. Okay, look up here. Don't look at your book. I as in? Aisle. A as in? Hate. Oi as in? Oil. oil. We as in? Sweet. <laughs> ow as in? Faust. You as in feud, and oo as in soup. Okay? Those are called diphthongs, and all that Greek word means is a double sound. When you put two vowels together in Greek, they form a diphthong. One last thing, and then we'll take a break. Sometimes in Greek, before a vowel, before a long vowel, you will sometimes see what letter written below them. What letter in Greek would you think this is? Not an iota, but a what? Iota. Okay? This is called 
in Greek, because it comes underneath the vowel, it is called the iota subscript. Okay? Subscript comes from the Latin, which means what? Written sub, written under. Subscriptum, written under. Okay? Now, here's the only thing for today you need to know about. You don't need to understand how it works, why it's there, or anything. Here's the only thing you need to remember. When you have an iota subscript, it never affects the pronunciation of the letter. Watch this. This is, well, let's use this one. This is the letter eta, so how will I pronounce eta? A, right? Pronounce this letter. A. Name this letter. Eta. Pronounce this letter. A, right? Now watch this. Now pronounce this. A. See that? There's no difference. Pronounce this letter. O. Name this letter. Omega. Now pronounce this letter. O. Now pronounce this. O. Got it? The Yoda subscript has a lot of meaning. Later on, we'll see what it means in terms of grammar. But in terms of pronunciation, don't worry about it. Just ignore it when you're pronouncing it. Just ignore the Yoda when it's underneath the letter, okay? Now, when it's on the line, <laughs> you see, you can't ignore it, right? This is I as in? Isle. This is A as in? Eight. eight. This is we as in? Sweet, right? Got that? All right, well, it's 10.15, and we have a 15-minute break. Is that correct? All right, take a 15-minute break. We'll come back and finish the lesson. All right, 15 minutes. Thank you. Discussion of uh, chapter one. And what I would like to do is help you to form the Greek letters correctly. So if you will please take out a piece of paper or scratch paper, you won't turn this into me. So any paper will do at all. And I'm going to put the Greek letters on the board and then ask you to write them, okay? So what we're going to do now is go ahead and start writing out the Greek lowercase letters. Now the reason is, is our quiz tomorrow will cover the Greek lowercase letters, okay? Now, I have a little chart on page 6. You might want to turn to page 6. And you can see at the top of the page, okay, this is sort of a guide uh, as to how to form the Greek letters. All right? So if you look at the board, let me just start writing the Greek letters. An alpha can either be written like this, that's, that looks like a fish, or you can write it like this. And the way I prefer to write it is like this. I think it's easier. So please try writing an alpha on your paper there. And you might look at the book for some help. Your book does it more like a fish, but often you'll see it like, like a regular English A. That's the Greek letter alpha. No problem there. Should not be any problem at all. So practice writing the letter A, or alpha. OK? Now, here's the letter beta. Please watch carefully. Do not, do not, do not lift your pen. Do not write a B. This is an English B, right? The beta is one continuous stroke. If here's the line, the beta is one continuous stroke. So please start writing the beta. Please write the beta. The Greek letter B is called beta. And it starts below the line, and you do not lift your pen at all for the beta. All right? That's the beta. Now, watch the camera. Look, don't write a Y. Don't lift your pen and write a Y. No, no, no. The gamma is one continuous stroke. One continuous stroke for the gamma. So please practice now writing the gamma. That's the Greek G. G. Gamma. Gamma. Alpha, beta, gamma. Okay? Okay. Here's what the delta looks like. You start with a curl on the top and then you just write an O. Start with a curl on top and it ends up looking like this. This is the letter D, the delta. D. Delta. Please practice writing this letter, gentlemen and ladies. Delta. Delta. Okay? So we have alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and finally, we have the epsilon. Now notice this. Epsilon can look like this, 
Or the way I prefer to write it is like this. This is the epsilon. Please practice writing the epsilon. This is the short e in Greek. E, e. Epsilon is always pronounced how? E, not a. E. Okay. So we have alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and epsilon. Please write those letters down. Practice writing those letters. We're on the top of page six. If you came in late, top of page six. Top of page six. All right, now, watch the board, please. <laughs> there are two letters that are very difficult to write. And this is the first one, okay? This is the zeta. Now, watch how you do it. You put a little curly Q at the top, and then you finish below the line. A little curly Q and then finish below the line. That's called the zeta. Z, zeta. Look at your book for the zeta. You can see how it's formed in your book. See how it's formed in your book, the zeta. That's a hard one. So you may need to practice the zeta. Zeta. All right. Now, take a minute to practice that zeta, if you don't mind, because that is a difficult one to form. The zeta it starts with a little curl on the top, but then it finishes below the line, like this, zeta. And that, of course, is the is a dz sound, a dz sound, z, 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 as in adds. Okay, <coughs> zeta. Here's the eta, ladies and gentlemen. No problem with the eta. This is the eta. Look at your book if you need help with the eta. That's the long e. That's the long E, eta, eta. So we must always distinguish between the epsilon and the what? Eta. Okay, always distinguish between the epsilon and the letter eta. Theta is no problem. Just a oblong circle with a line through it. That's a TH, theta. It's no problem there. That's the letter theta. That's the TH sound. <coughs> theta. And then we have iota, which is just an I. Watch this now. Don't dot the I, <laughs> like in English. The Greeks were much more sensible. Now, why do you need that little dot up there? So they left it out. That's the iota. No problem with the iota. Okay? By the way, it's always iota and never iota. Never I oda, always E oda. Okay, this is never pronounced I. It is always pronounced E. 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 Thank you. E oda. Kappa. Now notice the kappa looks like our K, but it doesn't. It doesn't go high like that. It's not like this. It's like this. That's kappa. No problem with the kappa. It looks almost identical to our K in English. Kappa. So we have zeta. Eta, theta, iota, kappa. Kappa or kappa. Ka kappa, kappa. It doesn't matter. It's the first sound that's important. But ka. Ka. And then lambda. Here's the lambda. Lambda. No problem with the lambda. Look at your textbook if you need help. Look at your book on writing the letter lambda. Lambda. That's the L sound. So what do we have so far? We have alpha. Beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda. Okay? Take a minute. Work on these letters. Try to form them correctly. If you need help, look at the top of page six in your book. Top of page six in your book. All right. Let's go to the next line here. <coughs> Here's a letter mu. It starts below the line, and then you put a U, a U shape. Below the line, and then a U shape. That's the letter M in Greek. It's called mu. Mu. That's the letter M. The name of the letter is mu. That's the mu. No problem with the mu. Watch the board now. Watch this. The nu looks like what letter in English? That's right. It looks like a V. It has a point. Make sure it has a point. That's the letter N in Greek. That's not a V. 
That's an N. And the name of the letter is new. But it looks like a V. So make sure that it's pointed. Make sure that it's pointed. Okay? Mu and new. Okay. Now how many letters did I say were really hard? <laughs> Two. The first one was this. And now here's the next one. Watch the board, please. You're going to need to watch it. It starts out like this letter with a little curl, okay? Except now you repeat the curl. Watch the board. You're going to do two curls. One, two, and three. See it? One, two, and three. One, two, and three. That's called the letter C. That's the X sound. Again, if you need help, please look at your textbook. You'll, you'll see how it's formed there. C. C. This is the letter X. C. And that's the second one that's very, very difficult to, to write correctly. All right? That's the letter C. Practice writing the C, if you will, for a few times. Manuk C. Now, if this was a difficult one, the next one is easy. Here's the Omicron. It looks just like our what? Like our O, right? That's the Omicron. No problem with the Omicron. Manu, C, Omicron. Mu, Nu, C, Omicron. And here's a letter pi. Some of you have seen it in science, right? Some of you have seen that in science. That's a letter pi, or you can call it P. It doesn't matter because it's the first sound that's important. That's our P sound. It's called pi or P. Please practice writing this letter a few times. If you need help, look at your book. It'll show you how to do it. Okay, now please everybody watch, because this net lecture letter is very important. Do not write the letter P. Again, use one continuous stroke for the row. This is the R. This is the R in Greek. Please use one continuous stroke. Do not lift your pen. That's the R. It's called row. It looks like a P, doesn't it? But don't say P. Say R. It's an R sound. <coughs> And don't lift your pen, just use one continual motion. One continual motion in writing the letter row. Okay, now ladies and gentlemen, we have the sigma. And notice all it is is, a, is an O with a little hook on it. A little, an O with a little hook coming off. That's the sigma. That's the sigma. No problem there. It's an O with a little hook coming off of it, okay? But notice also, how many sigmas are there in Greek? How, how many ways can you write a sigma? Two. So what you're going to do always, always also write a sigma. Now watch this. A sigma what? Looks like an S, but it's top heavy. Watch this. It's a top heavy S. You see that? A top heavy S. So whenever you're writing out the alphabet, always include both forms of the sigma. Let me repeat that. When you're writing out the alphabet, always include both, OK? Both the regular sigma and what we call the what sigma, do you remember? The final sigma, that's right, because it only comes where? At the end, or the final position. The final position, or the end, we call it the final sigma, okay? So even though the Greek alphabet has 24 letters, on the quiz tomorrow, how many letters will you actually be writing? 25. You have to write both of the sigmas, okay? And then we have one more line to go. And, and by the way, there's a reason why I'm doing this this way in four lines, okay? There's a reason I'm doing that. By the way, if you have not signed up for the textbook, how many of you have not signed yet for the textbook? Anybody here? Okay, the sign-up sheet will be here in case you need to sign up. All right, let's look at the tau. Tau is no problem. It's just a foreshortened T. Tau. No problem there. Look at the top of page six if you need help. That's the tab. And you can make it a little fancier if you like, but I, you don't need to make it fancy. Just just choo choo. That's all you need to do. Choo choo. Now watch this. Watch this. The, the upsilon looks like our what letter? Now please notice the difference. See the new and the oo. This is an N, this is a U. Now make sure this is pointed. If you don't make this pointed, if you write this kind of fast like that, I might think it's what letter? That's right, the upsilon. So be very careful to round this letter out and don't make it pointed. And be sure to make the new pointed, okay? That's the upsilon. Upsilon. That's the that's the U sound. Upsilon. Okay? 
All right, here's the letter fee. Watch this. All it is is a circle with a line going through it. That's the fee. That's the pH sound. Fee. Fee. That's the pH sound. The key looks like our X. Looks like the letter X. No problem there. The key looks like our letter X. Practice writing the fee. Practice writing the key. Shouldn't be any problem. This is the pH sound. This is the CH sound. Fee, key. Now watch this next one. All you do is put a U and a line through it. A U and a line through it. That's the letter C. C has a PS sound to it. C. Like there's a word in English. We have this word in English. Now how do we normally pronounce this word in English? Yeah, we don't pronounce the P, do we? We just say psychology. But the Greeks would have said psychology, right? Because it comes from this letter. So when you see this letter, always do the P sound. It's a P before the S, okay? So it's not C, it's what? It's C. C. Okay, it can get kind of wet, so be careful. C. Don't spit on anybody. C. And then, of course, here's the omega. This is the last letter of the Greek alphabet, the omega. You can practice writing the omega a couple of times. Okay? All right. Okay, everybody take, if you will, 30 seconds or so, and please go through the whole alphabet again. Write each letter one time. Go alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Would you do that? Take about 30 seconds and just rewrite every single letter from alpha to omega, okay? And you can look at your book, look at your book. Follow the top of page six. Write out the Greek lowercase letters in proper what? Order, okay? By the way, on tomorrow's quiz, that's the question. That is, write out in proper order the Greek what? Lower, not upper, lower case letters. And how many forms will it be? 24, 25. Why do we have to have 25? Because we have two sigma. see that there? Okay, take a minute if you will, just write them, write them, write them, until you become comfortable writing them. It's not that hard, it's not that bad. Yes, sir, question. How do we write the what? Oh, two ways. You can either write it like a fish, like in the textbook, or you can write it like an English A. And I prefer to do it this way. I prefer just to do it this way. And a lot of your Greek, like your Greek New Testament, it'll, it'll look like this. And you can write it either way. Yes, you can write the alpha either way. It doesn't matter to me. It does not matter to me. While you're writing, I'm just going to keep repeating the alphabet. Can I do that? I'll repeat it slowly while you're writing it until we get used to the alphabet. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. Zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda. Mu, nu, xi, omicron, pi, rho, sigma. Tau, upsilon, phi, ki, psi, omega. Keep writing and I'll keep talking. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. Zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda. Mu, nu, xi, omicron, pi, rho, sigma. Tau, upsilon, phi, ki, psi, omega. Everybody look at the board, please. And here we go. Say them with me. Alpha. Beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. Zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda. Mu, nu, xi, omicron, pi, rho, sigma, tau, upsilon, Phi, chi, psi, omega. Look at the board. Let's do it again. Are you ready? Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, xi, 
Omicron, Pi, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, V, P, C, Omega. Now look at the board and just listen. I'm going to read them again. Attune your ear. Okay, attune your ear, attune your eye. Here we go. Just listen. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, Iota, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Xi, Omicron, Pi, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, Chi, Psi, Omega. Okay? Let's do it together one last time. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, Iota, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, C, Omicron, Pi, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, Chi, C, Omega. Okay, anybody want to take a chance and read it out loud for me? Who would like to read the Greek alphabet for me? Anybody? Anybody want to try? Yes, sir. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, Iota, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, C, Omicron, P, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Epsilon, Phi, Chi, C, Omega. Excellent! Oh, you want to come up and teach this class? <laughs> you do better than I do. <laughs> that was great. You see how this works now? Okay, now, would you mind if I taught you a little song that would help you to remember this? Would you mind that? Yes. If you'll turn to page 200 in your book, you will see what I call the alphabet song. Okay? Now, I want to warn you, I am not a vocalist as will become apparent very quickly. <laughs> All right? I am not a vocalist, but I'm going to try to teach you the song anyway, OK? 29 years ago, when I began teaching Greek, I put together this little song, OK? And, and I teach it to my students for 29 years. And they teach it to their little one-year-old, two-year-old kids. And they come to our house every semester. We have, we have the students look to our home with their families. And the little children are singing this. So if a little one-year-old can learn it, I can learn it. And you can learn it. Okay? <laughs> now, this is an American tune. I am sure you've never heard it. So, this is going to be real strange to you. Okay? It doesn't have the inherent beat to it. Okay? <laughs> it has an American beat to it. But let me try to teach it to you. Okay? Now, if you look at the board, do you notice why I did it this way now? Because this particular song has four stanzas. See, it has four lines to it? And that's why I taught it to you this way. Now, if you look at it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing it for you, okay, while you look at it, okay? Can some of you read music? Some of you read music, maybe? Yes. Yes, somebody, maybe. <laughs> All right, well, you can kind of tell where it jumps, okay? All right, are you ready? All right, listen carefully. It goes like this. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda. Munu, C, Omicron, Pyro, Sigma, Tau, Usalon, Phi, Ki, C, Omega. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> yeah, I know what you're laughing at. <laughs> All right, listen, I'm going to sing it again. Okay, you watch, and I'm going to sing it again. See if you can learn it. See if you can pick it up. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, Iota, Kappa, Lambda. Mudu, C, Omicron, Pyro, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, Keep, C, Omega. Now, let's try this. Let me sing one line and then you sing it after me, okay? And then we'll do the next line, we'll go that way. All right, let's try it line by line now. Listen first and then see. Here we go, first line. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, your turn. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, now listen. Zeta, Eta, Theta, Iota, Kappa, Lambda. Z, 
This word is not apostolos. This word is apostolos. Say that. Apostolos. And Greek puts an accent mark wherever we must put the emphasis when we say the word. <laughs> now, Greek has three accent marks, okay? This accent mark is called the acute accent mark. When the accent mark goes in this direction, it's called the grave. And you don't need to write this down, it's all in the book. This is called the acute. This is called the grave. And then when you have one that looks like this, that's called the circumflex. So Greek has three accent marks, they are as follows. Acute, grave, circumflex. Please say those three words with me. Acute, grave, circumflex. Now, you don't have to understand how they work, why they're there, or anything. The only thing you need to remember is that when you see an accent mark, you are going to emphasize that syllable, right? You're going to accent that syllable when you're reading Greek aloud, okay? So with that in mind, please turn to page 8, and let's look at some examples of pronunciation, okay? We're on page 8, examples of Greek pronunciation. You see them there? Okay. The first word is, now just listen, the first word is apostolos. Now say it. Apostolos. Now here's how you pronounce the next word. Soma. Your turn. Soma. See that? Now what? This, this next word is not phone. This next word is what? Phone. Do you see the accent? Phone. Don't say phone. Say what? Phone. Got it? The next word is cardia. Say it. Cardia. The next word is phobos. Say it. Phobos. Never say phobos. It's phobos. Why is it phobos, class? Why? Watch this. What is the name of this letter, class? No, 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 the name of the letter. Say Omicron. What is the name of this letter? Omicron. How will you always pronounce an Omicron? Ah. Oh, don't go O. Okay, don't go O. It's A. Oh. So, look at that word in the Greek again. The word for fear is not phobos, but what? Favos. Good. The next word is genos. You can say it. Genos. The next word literally means horse lover. Horse lover, or we translate it Philip. And here's how you say it in Greek. Philippos. Your turn. Philippos. Very good, very good. The next word is exados. Your turn. Exados. One more time. Exados. Very good. This next word is zoe. Your turn. Zoe. Again. Zoe. Good. The name for Peter is simply Petros. Petros. Not pe not Petros. Watch this. Look at this, class. It's not Petros. What's the name of this letter? Name it for me. Epsilon. Eb. How will you always pronounce it? Epsilon. Eb. So this is not Petros, right? You might want to say, what is it in here? Petros? You want to say Petros, don't you? Look at the Greek word. It's not Petros. Watch this. It's Petros. See it there? Petros. Good. Next word for God is Theos. Say Theos. Theos. This next word for woman, never say Guni. Never say Guni or you'll be in big trouble. This word is not Guni. This word is Gune. Try it. Gune. Accent it again. Gune. Right. The, the word for father is Pater. Pater. The word for soul is psuke. Psuke. The word for city is polis. Polis. You try. Polis. Do you see where the accent mark is? Yes. It's not polis. It's what? Polis. Good. And then finally, you, I know you're going to want to say Christos, right? Don't say Christos. It's Christos. See that? Christos. Now, let me just say one word about pronunciation. Listen, folks. We have no idea 
how Greek was pronounced 2,000 years ago. There were no tape recorders available. What we are trying to do is give you a, pr a pronunciation guide that helps you to distinguish between certain vowel sounds primarily. Okay? This is, this is sort of a made-up pronunciation. As I said, modern Greek is completely different. It's completely different. What we're trying to do is, as best as we can, kind of reconstruct what we think Greek would have been pronounced like, okay, 2,000 years ago. But nobody really knows. But for our purposes, listen, I, I really want you to distinguish between these two letters, okay? And I really want you to distinguish between these two letters. And the re listen, the reason I want you to do it is when you begin to memorize vocabulary, it's going to help you. It's going to help you. If you have correct pronunciation and correct enunciation, it will help you to remember your vocabulary. Believe me. Now, I want you to notice that this is not a vocabulary list. You don't have to memorize these words, okay? In fact, we won't have vocabulary until chapter 3. So don't get out your cards. Don't start memorizing. Now, this is only for what purposes? To help us to correctly pronounce, okay? And I will say this also. I have a cassette tape I have made, which goes through all of what I've just gone through in terms of I've read it aloud, all of the Greek, and in the next several lessons, I've read all of the Greek. I've read all of the, uh, the uh, vocabulary and exercises and so on. If you are interested in that, I will have a sign-up sheet here. And Fosso, let's call it the, the pronunciation sign-up sheet. If you would like a copy, I can make you a copy of this cassette. If you have a cassette tape recorder. And if you want to really work on your pronunciation, I have produced it. It's going to help you if you want it. I'll make it optional. It's not required. But if after class you would like a copy, if you will sign up here, I will have those copies made hopefully this afternoon and they'll be here tomorrow, okay? If you would like a cassette, and we'll just charge you or the school will charge you whatever it costs them to make it, okay? Whatever it costs them to make it. I don't know what it would cost, but it wouldn't cost that much if you're interested. One last thing we're going to do today. <coughs> On page 8, at the bottom, notice I've written out the Greek of John 1, 1 through 5. You see it there? John 1, 1 through 5. There's a question, yes? How did you, how do we pronounce these letters? The best way we know how is based upon the manuscripts of the New Testament. For example, in the manuscripts of the New Testament, these two letters are always distinguished. They're always distinguished. Therefore, it leads us to conclude that these two letters have different what? Sounds. Different sounds. Okay, they had different sounds. Whereas in modern Greek today, both, by the way, both of these are pronounced O. This is pronounced O, and this is pronounced O. But because of the, man, the early manuscripts of the New Testament, that's the only way we can guess. We go back to those particular manuscripts. And uh, the problem is really with the vowels, not the consonants so much. Not with the consonants so much. But admittedly, we really don't know. We're trying, trying to guess our best. I mean, the manuscripts stand is pronounced. But it will tell when you have a variant reading. When you have a variant reading where there's a uh, the scribe wrote a different reading, and 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 the reading depends on whether there's an omicron and an omega. We know that it affected pronunciation. So we know in the first century that these two letters were distinguished, whereas in modern Greek they're not. So we're just doing the best we can. And the only reason I'm insisting on this is because it'll help you. If you, if you go O O. And I tell you to write, I tell you to write apostolos, but you memorize it as apostolos, you're going to write one letter here, apostolos. You might write one letter, omega, right? Rather than an omicron. Another question. Yes? What is the difference between the different accents for the different, for example, the IQ claim? They don't, they don't have any meaning. The question is, what is the meaning of the accents? At one time, they indicated pitch. Your voice went up and your voice went down. But by the New Testament period, we don't believe that was the case anymore. And by the way, did the Greeks need accent marks? Did the Greeks need accents to tell them where to accent? No. Why did they invent accent marks? For foreigners. For the Frenchies, right? So the Frenchies wouldn't mispronounce the words. That's why they invented these accent marks. It was really for foreigners. All right? So my name is is David, right? It's not David, right? 
But if you're learning it for the first time, right? If you look at an English word, you don't know how to pronounce it, right? Theological. Or is it theological? Or is it theological? You don't know, right? Unless you learn it. Well, the Greeks decided that they would put accent marks to help foreigners like us to correctly pronounce their words. The Greeks, of course, didn't need accent marks. And I will say one more thing. In the earliest manuscripts of the New Testament, there are no, there are no accent marks. These were added to help primarily non-native Greek speakers correctly pronounce the words. That's what they write. Very good question. Any other questions before we proceed? <coughs> Bottom of page 8, ladies and gentlemen. I've given you John 1, 1 through 5. I'd like to read it aloud, okay? All right? And I, just, just listen to it. Begin to attune your ear to the pronunciation of Greek, okay? And uh, here we go. John 1, 1 through 5, bottom of page 8. Just listen while I read it aloud. This is a very familiar passage to you, isn't it? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning was God, with God, right? So it's a very familiar passage. Here's how it goes in Greek. Just listen. N, R, K. Ain. Now notice this next word has a rough reading mark, right? Right? So the next word is ha, lagos, kai, ha, lagos, ain, pros, tan, theon. Kai, theos, ain, ha, lagos. Who talks? Notice you have an oo as in what English word? Oo as in? Nobody remembers? Su. Who as in su. Plus you have what breathing mark? You have the rough breathing mark. So put all that together. The first syllable is who. You see it there? Who toss ain n r k pros tan theon. Oh, by the way, you see these two words? You have ain and you have n. Ain means was. N is a preposition meaning what? Can you guess? In. Now what's the difference between these, these, two, these two words? The difference is between what letter? Eta and what letter? Epsilon, right? Can you hear the difference? Ain, N. Ain, N. So we have utas, Ain, N, R, K, pros, ta, the on. Panta, D out to agenita. Now here we're on the third line. You see where we are? We're on the third line. Kai, that's the word and. Kai, chorus out to agenita ude. Now watch this. This is a preposition meaning what? In this next word, you notice the difference? It has what kind of a breathing mark? A rough breathing mark. So how would you pronounce this word? Hen. And it's the number one in Greek. It's the numeral one. So the only difference between in and one is n or hen. Can you hear the difference? Yeah. N means in. Hen means one. And what the passage is saying is all things came into being through him, and apart it from him, nothing came into being, not even one thing. See the Greek? That's beautiful. Nothing came into being. Not one! Not one thing! Ha keganen en auto zoe ein. Kai he zoe ein ta fos ton anthropo. Kai ta fos en te skatia. Fine. Please look at that word. <laughs> Can you see it way back there? Phi nay. Does anybody remember? I as in aisle. A as in eight. Remember that? That's why it's important to, to remember those diphthongs. I as in aisle. A as in eight. So look at that word again. The last word in line four. Fine, all right. And now we're on line five. Here we go. Kai he skatia alta u katelven. 
The light keeps on shining in the darkness, and the darkness has never been able to what? Put it out. Snuff it out. Either comprehend it, apprehend it, or whatever. That word, katalambano, is a tough word. Katalaban, okay? It's never been able to apprehend it, comprehend it, or put it out. The darkness can't do that, right? And the light keeps on and keeps on and keeps on shining in the darkness, right? Nothing can put it out, is that right? Right? No matter what your political system is, right? No matter who's in power in terms of government. No matter whether the church is up, above ground or under, it doesn't matter. The, the light will what? Keep on shining in the darkness and nothing, no darkness, no darkness can comprehend it. No darkness can apprehend it. And no darkness can put it out. Now listen one more time. I'm going to read the passage again a little bit faster, okay? I've been reading it at this pace. In the beginning was the word. Do you understand? That's a little slow, isn't it? Let me pick up the pace a little bit. Listen now. N R K. Ain ha logos. Kai ha logos. Ain pros kan theon. Kai theos. Ain ha logos. Hutas. Ain n r k. Pros kan theon. Hanta, d out to, egenata. Kai, koris out to, egenata. Ude, hen. Ha, gekanen, en out to, zoe, in. Kai, he, zoe, in, ta, fos, ton, and thropo. Kai, Ta fos en te scatia fine. Kai he scatia alta u katalaban. And someday you'll be able just to sit down and just read this and translate it, right? En arke en halagos. Kai halagos en pros tan de on. Kai de os! That word is fronted for emphasis. Kai de os en halagos. We translated the word was God, but the Greek says, the os! In halagas. And it was God! That's the word was. You see how God is fronted for emphasis? You don't see that in your translation, do you? But it's there in the Greek. Panta diao tu again at all. How many things came into being through him? Panta. All things came into being through him. And apart from him was nothing made that was made. Not even what? One little thing. In him was life, and the life was the what? The light of man, right? And the light keeps on what? Shining in the darkness, and the darkness has never been able to apprehend it. Okay? Right. The goal is not to, you know, memorize Luo, Luis, Lue, Lumen, Lue, Lue. The goal is to be able to read your Greek New Testament, right? With the minimal use of a lexicon. And folks, that's my promise. If you stick it out, if you stick with me, I'll stick with you, you stick with me. For six weeks, you'll be able to sit down and read your Greek New Testament with the minimal use of the light sky. But of course, it starts where? Alpha, beta, gamma, alpha. It starts there, doesn't it? We can't do anything else unless we learn the alphabet. Any questions at this point? Anything at all? All right, here's your assignment for tomorrow. This will be on tomorrow's quiz. There'll be one question. Write out in proper order. The Greek lower case letters. Got it? That's what you'll have to do on the test. Plus, there'll be extra credit. There'll be seven or eight points of extra credit, okay? And on the extra credit, now only for this first quiz, because in future quizzes, the extra credit will be going from English into Greek. All right? But for this first quiz, I will ask you some other questions based upon this chapter. So read the chapter carefully. Read it a couple times, okay? And I'll ask the extra credit questions based upon some of the other information in the chapter, okay? And if you read the chapter carefully twice, you, I'm sure you'll do fine. I'm sure you'll do fine. But that's extra credit. Remember, the main thing for tomorrow is you have to what? You have to master. You have to master the Greek alphabet. It's not that hard. It's not that difficult. 
It just means sitting down and writing it and using the alphabet song if it will help you. All right, now, the cassette tape sign-up sheet, okay? That's going around. And if you sign your name there, I will have a cassette made for you hopefully this afternoon. You can have that tomorrow, and then you can begin to listen to the Greek, okay? Are there any other questions? Yes, sir? In the text that you have given us from John chapter 1, yes. uh, I see that there are the same uh, punctuation marks that we see in English. Yes, exactly. The question is, in the passage that we looked at from the book of John, it seems that the same punctuation marks, right, are used as in English. And that's largely true. But when you read this chapter carefully, you'll see that there are a couple of punctuation marks that look a little different. Okay? But we have a whole section on punctuation. So please, remember, in class, do I go over everything? I won't go over everything. That's why it is incumbent and important for you to read the lesson, everything in the lesson. Very good question. Basically, Greek uses the same punctuation. But watch this. Here's the Greek question mark. That's the Greek question mark. Ooh. In English, that looks like a what? What do we call that in English? It's not a colon, but a what? Semicolon, semi right? That's a semicolon. So in Greek, when you see this, it's not going to be a semicolon, it's going to be a what? A question mark. Okay? But otherwise, a comma is a comma, and a period is a period, and so on. Very good question. I'm glad you asked that question. Anything else? Anything at all? Yes? Okay. All right. All right. Let me just ask, who has not signed the textbook sheet? If you received the textbook, did you sign your name? If you if you didn't, then you need to sign it here. Okay. So Fossil, if you wouldn't mind just circulating that. And while Fossil is doing that, um, are there any other questions over what we covered today? Do you kind of understand what we're doing here? Okay. So. The assignment for tomorrow is to write out the Greek lowercase letters. All right? All right. Yes, sir? Can we go over the song once again? No, you glutton for punishment. All right, turn to page 200. Back by popular request. Are you ready? Page 200. Turn to page 200. You got to see it. I happen to have memorized it, OK? Are you there? Page 200? Not there. I see he doesn't have his book open. Page 200. Page 200. You got to look. You got to look. Don't trust me. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Here we go. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, si, omicron, pi, rho, sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, keep C, Omega. Uh, one more time. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, Iota, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, C, Omicron, Pi, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, keep C, Omega. Did you get it? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> All right. All right. Well. Um, I'll be happy to wait after class if you have any questions for a few minutes. That's no problem whatsoever. Are there any other questions before we conclude? Yes, sir. Good question. If we have a diphthong like this, where does the breathing mark go? And the breathing mark will always go over the second vowel. So if a word begins with two vowels, very good question, it will not come over the first vowel, but over the which vowel? So the breathing mark will always come over the second vowel of a, what are these called again? Diphthong. Very good question. Anything else? All right, let's bow in a word of prayer. We'll be dismissed. Father, we bless you for your presence in our midst, and I thank you, Father, that even though we're departing from each other's company, that we never part from you. Lord, would you go and be with these students? Would you be good to them? Would you bless them? Would you help them, not just to learn this material, Father, but would you help them to master it today? 
We know you can do this, Lord, and we trust you, and we depend completely upon you. Lord, thank you so much for your presence in our class. We've enjoyed it, we've experienced it, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all, and we'll see you tomorrow. At what time? What time tomorrow? Is it 8.30? 8.30, we'll see you then.